Good morning, everybody. Hope you're having a beautiful day and that you're ready because today I want to share with you the three things I've learned from shooting with some of the best professional photographers around the world. And some of those things really surprised me. So if you're ready, let's get started. All right, we're going to get started. But before that, if you don't know me, I'm Pierre T. Lambert. I'm a travel adventure photographer and the creator of the 30-day adventure to great photos, a step-by-step -step training program to get your photography to the next level. Unlock what is happening in your mind so you can take great photos no matter what kind of gear you're using. And I've been shooting with a ton of different photographers around the world through the years. Some of them, I would call them world-class in their fields. And some of them are just such versatile photographers that I learned so much from them. And on top of that, I had many others on the podcast. Maybe some I haven't been able to shoot with, but it got me to learn a lot of things from them. And some of those things really surprised me because I had preconceived ideas as to how those people would handle situation and just how they would foster their own creativity. So if you're ready, let's start with number one. And number one is simply that they all have extremely expensive gear. No, I'm joking. What I see is the further they progress in the career and the less gear they have, they are going to focus more with one lens or two lenses versus having six lenses when they travel because they feel more and more into the storytelling versus the capturing some beautiful things and adding a lot of technique. They concentrate a lot more on the storytelling from my point of view, from my experience with them than the rest. And for that, you don't need a million lenses. You just need maybe two lenses to do the job really well. On top of that, what I noticed about the gear is that yes, they have expensive gear, but if I give them a terrible camera, a cheap camera, they will still take great photos. It's a reminder for us not to focus just on having expensive gear, but really mastering our craft and getting better in photography without expensive gear, with any kind of gear. Remember our old uh, Nikon D60, D40, um, the Canon uh, 400D, if you remember those, if you are able to go back to those cameras, even with a kit lens and take photos that you're proud of, you know you've mastered the art of visualizing, seeing and capturing no matter what kind of gear you use. And that's something we talk a lot about in the training program. You can check it out. There is a link in the description if you want to go deeper. But that's something really I took from all those photographers. Now, the second point might be really surprising to many of you. And we're going to go this way for that. And it is simply that they don't shoot all the time. What does it mean? It means that they actually take a lot of breaks where they don't shoot. And you'll see them literally spend maybe months at a time or weeks at a time, depending on their character, without taking photos with their main cameras. They will still capture a few things with their phones, but I was really surprised to hear, for example, from people like Chris Burkett, that they will spend a few weeks without taking photos with a camera, without touching it. And one of the reasons is that when they go into shoots, and it's kind of the same that happening for me, when I go into shoots, I go 120% into it. I'm shooting, I'm ultra focused, and it's almost like biking. You don't really forget how to shoot, but you can always practice and train, right? So from my experience, it's something that will happen later in your career where you're able to take those breaks, replenish yourself creatively without having to worry about the camera and getting caught up. And then you can get back into the shoot, be 120% present, know exactly how to use your camera, how to find the best angles, the best light, the best settings to tell the best story. And even if you took four weeks off, it doesn't matter. It actually helps you because creatively you just replenish yourself, having less pressure and focusing maybe on something different or a different aspect of your photography business or your life. Here's something to know before we move on to the next one. All those pro photographers, they're actually making money and they know how to make money. One of the ways that you can make money with your photography and with your your videos is through selling stock footage and stock photography and this is where I want to introduce you to wirestock.io or sponsor of the day. Wirestock allows you to sell your photography and your video on all major marketplaces from a single account. Shutterstock, Getty Images, Adobe Stock, Elami, Pond5, DreamSite and many more. It's super easy to submit. You have high quality keywording and captioning for each photo and video for free and you can handle everything from your one account. On top of that, you can have the Wirestock portfolio, which is literally a portfolio for yourself that you can use as a personal shop to sell content directly as collections individually or as print. And the best part is that Wirestock commission is only 15% of the paid royalty, which means that you're keeping the 85% remaining and goes straight to your creator's balance. So if you want to make some extra money with what you shoot, check out wirestock.io. The link is in the description. The third one, which is kind of evident and that I really encourage 
encourage you to go on your own journey to achieve that is to master the technicalities of photography, meaning your exposure triangle, aperture, shutter speed, and ISO, how to master that so that no matter what kind of camera they're using, they know exactly how to make it work so that they get the creative effect and able to tell the story that they want. So for that, you can train literally with any camera from a phone to a hundred year old camera to master that technique. And then you'll be able to shoot with whatever kind of camera you are using. And you know what was interesting is some of those pros were not like geeks around the setting. I feel like it's more important to be a good storyteller and know exactly how to get your creative effect rather than geek too deeply into what exact feature and setting to use in general. Now, don't get me wrong. Geeking on the features is awesome because it will help you maybe do things faster and you will be more well-rounded as to using cameras. But if you master the base techniques, you're not relying so much on the technology to help you get the photo, but really you're going back to the roots and you can use any type of camera that you want. And last one, the most important is the dedication to the art of finding light and stories. Let me explain. The most important thing you can do as a photographer is finding the great light to get your story across and capturing something that is beautiful, but that is also enticing and eliciting and also giving emotions to the viewer. That is literally one of the most important things. What I've noticed is that those pro photographers are ready to be up at 4 a.m., at 3 a.m., at 2 a.m., hike up a mountain, get that sunrise from the top of the mountain, or be at the right place at the right time. They will plan exactly where they need to be for the type of light they are trying to get for the type of condition they're trying to get. Maybe it's the moon, maybe it's the Milky Way, maybe it's a special event in a street, in a country. They will do everything it takes to align every single thing possible so that it matches the vision that they have for that image. And honestly, it's hard sometimes. You know, you wake up super early in the morning, you go to bed super late, and then maybe you are for the start. But honestly, it is worth it because you're going on this adventure to get those photos. And if you don't do that, no one else can do it for you. And that's what I learned from them. You know, it's like, if you don't put all the chances on your side when you're going to shoot, how do you expect to have those banger photos? How do you expect to get those jobs where people are wowed by what you're going to deliver to them? You really need to go out and beyond what you think you're capable of to get those shots. So the dedication to the art and craft is there 120% of the time when I see them work and they're laser focused, you know? Once they're shooting, they are shooting and they won't quit until they have exactly what they plan to. And if they have to adapt, they will. But honestly, a lot of them are a little stubborn just like me because we want this very specific shot, this very specific way, and we're gonna make it happen. And you just gotta believe sometimes that you can make it happen. So let me know in the comments, which one of those points do you associate the most with? Which one do you have to progress the most on? And I would love to hear if you have any other tip that you think anyone should hear in photography especially when trying to get to the next level. With that being said, guys, get out there, go shoot, try something different, try something new. I'll see you in the next one.